I'm Taylor. I'm Liam. And uh, we've been living on the road now since June of last year or so, June of 2021. And uh, at first we used to live in a big trailer that we towed behind our uh, GMC Sierra. We have a half ton truck here. So we used to tow a big 23 foot trailer, but we were spending way too much time inside of it. It was kind of like a house that we were towing. And so we wanted something a lot smaller, something that was a lot easier to get into off-grid parking spots. And so we ended up with this. We have our outdoor kitchen set up here. Uh, so it's sort of themed after like a 50s diner. So anyways, what we got running here, we have two four gauge wires that run all the way back to our batteries. And right here you got a fuse, just in case there's too much running through this way or the other way, so their battery stays nice and safe. This thing here is a battery isolator. So what this guy does is that it allows our main battery of our truck, the more important one, to charge first. And then once that's nice and charged, it'll let the auxiliary batteries in the back charge. Um, this thing is like a huge help and we we're really really lucky to find this last minute and uh, yeah They just both run back So the reason we have a chimney that detaches is because at first when we installed the chimney We had it coming out like a foot above the roof Which is the minimum clearance that you want to have but then we built the skylight and then the minimum clearance became another 12 inches up And if we were to do that as it currently was it would be sticking up way too high And we wouldn't be able to fit through drive throughs and underneath bridges and stuff or at least some of them. And uh, so the reason we did that was to get the stack high enough to create enough draw in the wood stove and still be able to drive safely. So come on in the camper. So camper's pretty small as you can see. Um, this is kind of all of our space right up front. So here we kept all the appliances standard uh, that came with the camper. They were all in like really, really good shape. And we kind of just added in some more storage, uh, like a spice rack over here. Um, but yeah, we have a three burner stove that runs on propane, which is great, lots of space. So we have a small sink here, and this actually doesn't work. We just use the main um, nozzle here, and it works great. The sink is actually pretty deep, and uh, yeah, we're able to do ju uh, dishes just fine. And then over here, we have our pantry. So lots of storage in here. We have DVDs up here. Um, and then some more stuff here, lots of canned goods, all of our dry food kind of goes in there. Here we have just like a little hanging basket for some of our produce. Um, up here we created, so basically we like changed the whole shape of the camper. We put in a way bigger skylight. So this wasn't here before, before it was just like a small plexiglass, like bubble skylight and it was actually dark, so you couldn't see through it. So now it's completely clear and uh, we're able to have plants. So anyways, we kind of used the new space to put in a shoe rack, because we would know where to put our shoes before. And now we have plants, so there's plants all up here. And then we have some more down here. So this right here used to be a door and it kind of had like a so sorry this was a wall and then we had a door so it kind of connected like this and it closed the camper off a lot like if the door was closed we were using the bathroom like you only have like this much space so we cut the wall kind of on an angle so this is our counter extension um as you can see our counter space is limited to this and there's not much room in between the sink and the stove so what we kind of put in to uh, solve some of our space problems with the counter is this piece of wood just lives up there and it acts as a counter extension so how we put it on is you open this up that drops down like that and then you just rest this piece of wood like this um, so this is great. We're able to chop things on here and keep more things on here because if we're using this cutting board You obviously can't open the sink at the same time um, So that kind of solves that problem. It's been great for us and you can kind of stand here too, which is which is cool or sit And we kind of use this to watch TV as well from the couch. So acts as kind of like a desk. The, the reason why we live in a truck camper um, I guess it's it shares a lot of the same reasons with how like why we live on the road so i guess we can probably start with that in the first place 
Um, so Taylor and I have always kind of wanted to do this, not necessarily together um, because we only started dating like a year and a half ago, but we've been friends our entire lives. We actually met when we were like four years old, but yeah. we can probably get into that a bit more after. Um, but yeah, the reason why we live on the road is because first of all, it's probably the freedom. Uh, second of all is that we got kind of honey potted in by the YouTube people, <laughs> to be honest. like. Um, like many people that live on the road that we've met, they were introduced to this lifestyle through YouTube and through Instagram. Um, for me, I was always like sending Taylor pictures of people from Instagram and the back doors of the van were open. There was a beach and they were drinking coffee and they're <laughs> like, oh, this could be our lives, you know? And then you get on the road and you realize that it's just your full time camping. Um, so the reason for getting in isn't the reason why we've, we've stayed. Um, the reason why we stayed is because... Um, it's a lot of fun. It's like, it's hard as hell sometimes, but when we think about the alternative ways of living, um, well, the alternative to ours, um, is that just like living in a house, paying rent or living in our parents' basements, essentially. Um, and this, this one is the one we choose, um, because you know, every way of life has its issues. Like there's ups and downs in every way of life with this one, at least we don't have to pay rent. And so our problems might be, you know, like our wood stove, the smoke is coming in, or, you know, we've run out of water, or the propane's out, or something goes wrong, or the roof is leaking, but at least we're not dealing with, oh, but my boss is being such a dick, and my, like, I can't pay my rent on time, and the bills are piling up, so every way of life has its problems, um, but this one, we just like the problems better, I guess. So while we live in a truck camper, so originally we had a RV, like a big, uh, I think it was like an 88, Ford Econoline RV or something like that uh, that Liam actually bought off of Facebook Marketplace and we redid the inside of it and it looked really great um, but we decided that it wasn't going to be like good enough mechanically to take us across the country so we kind of we sold that and then we bought a trailer so we had a 23 foot uh, Rockwood Rue it had slide outs which was also great like we did love it so much and we also customized the inside and it was really great but um, it was just too big like we were so comfortable in it that we didn't spend nearly as much time outside as we would have wanted to and uh, so we wanted something smaller we weren't quite set on a van uh, we wanted because we already had the truck so we just looked for truck campers and the problem was there was um, lots of truck campers for trucks that were bigger than the one that we currently have so we found this one on Facebook Marketplace for like 4,300 bucks and um, we, it was actually in Ontario and we were in... We were on the we? East Coast. We were though. on the East yeah. Coast. So we saw it kind of end of summer and uh, we had Liam's uh, dad and uncle go check it out because it was in Ontario. They saw it. They said it was great. We bought it. Uh, drove I don't know back. if they said it was, they said it was good enough. They liked it. Yeah, no, they, he, they liked it they enough. Liked yeah. it. it looked nice. It looked a lot different before, yeah. obviously, but it was in good condition. Yeah, like it's way smaller space. We're outside way more, which is kind of, it's really what we wanted. We still have a place to put all of our stuff and a place to live. So it just was, it gives you an opportunity to have a home wherever you go. The benefits, definitely taking life more slowly. Um, so although we're you know, here, there, and everywhere all of the time. Um, we're also able to, you know, stay in one place for a little bit longer, chill out, um, not worry so much about, you know, about working or about, um, you know, just regular things in life. Like, I feel like this really gets you more in nature and you live more in tune with the seasons, which I think is a really, really cool thing to be able to experience. Like, when you think about it, if people who work in like an office or something like that, you maybe go outside, um, you know, you go walk to your car, you walk to the building and then you walk back like at the end of the day. So you don't really spend any time outside, like feeling the outside, getting to see like nature. So being more in touch with nature has been and more in tune with the seasons has been like one of the, the best things. And also like endless opportunities, like living like this has endless opportunities. So the other day we like, we met someone, we were hiking and they asked us if we wanted to be in a documentary and you know we got to like go and film stuff with them so you get to meet people just kind of randomly and stumble upon random opportunities and see really cool places so like living in tune with the seasons is cool and it's like it's hard <laughs> yeah it like you learn a lot from it and it's cool to be able to like be outside basically even though we're in here like it, the walls are very thin so it's it's a glorified 
tent essentially yeah it's like in a, in a lot of ways it's kind of like that um but it doesn't feel like that when you're in the winter and you're in here and it's cold and the tanks are winterized and you're like sleeping with water tanks so that they don't freeze and then you come back in there's condensation all over the walls and then mm. the condensation freezes there's a lot of problems that come from living especially in canada like this not not to be negative but the the benefits um of this are everything that taylor touched on um and more it outweighs all of that yeah, yeah. like and those are little things you have to deal with like like we said we choose these problems yeah. over the pro like other problems but in the grand scheme of things like there is things that do suck sometimes but it to be able to be like okay what do you want to do today do you want to go for a hike you mm -hmm. want to go for three hikes like it's awesome to be able to just kind of pick up and go anywhere yeah, many, many challenges. challenges we made a lot of mistakes mm -hmm. uh you really do learn a lot from living like this no one has all the answers you can watch all the youtube videos in the world about van life and whatever but there's still things that you won't know and i think each vehicle is very different so there's a learning curve yep. with that but uh challenges we faced um we've been pretty good in finding places to sleep but uh there is times where it's hard to find places to sleep or you're in kind of sketchier uh places so that can be a challenge like every night you have to think of okay where am i gonna go um which can so be scary sometimes. they can be scary and yeah. it can be hard and it's tiring but it's not that bad we've had a lot of um we've, we've been pretty fortunate uh everywhere we found has been pretty great condensation is probably our biggest enemy uh yeah. in this world the, the drips the drips as we call them so the window back there like the window above our bed it'll drip down onto us uh if it's too cold in here so which is why we typically sleep with a sleeping bag because the sleeping bag at least it doesn't soak through and it'll dry throughout the day yeah so it doesn't drip on us but um, it'll it's like it's it can wet. it can be horrible sometimes it's wet in the morning yeah too. our clothes being damp sometimes that kind of sucks um i don't know what else in terms of challenges yeah um i was gonna speak more to like what taylor was just talking about with um just like finding places and it hasn't it honestly hasn't been a problem until we hit the west coast of vancouver island um and it was it was really strange right because you hear you hear of the west coast of vancouver island being tofino and eucalypt and it seems like people like us like that's where we everybody kind of flocks to that place we we're thinking it'll be easy for us to like park there and live but both towns now are like extremely um there's just nowhere to park they've like really cracked park, down yeah. on free overnight camping and there's not that many campgrounds either and they're not cheap so and there's people that will like there's signs in front of some houses that say like if you park here we will slash your tires like yeah you gotta it, be it really is a problem careful. and it's been like it's been interesting for us to like talk to people and get different perspectives on it and there's the one side where we come from and obviously we're blinded by our own perspective but we ourselves are very respectful and most of the people we've met are very respectful and we clean up our garbage a lot of us actually will clean up garbage that's not even ours yeah and we like, always pick up garbage when we like hike or walk around anywhere yeah but there, there are some people though who will just kind of treat the earth like their garbage can um we've noticed like a, a, a general change in how people view this sort of lifestyle and the people who live this sort of lifestyle and it's because it is definitely becoming harder for people like this to camp like we talk to people who have doing this for years they say oh a few years ago is completely different so i really wonder what this is going to look like in three years from now as more people are inspired to live this sort of lifestyle yeah so how i personally make money while we travel is originally i was in university and when i graduated i had money saved up and i and i worked for part of the summer before we left to travel and uh we have stopped before to work so we aren't like opposed to doing stuff like that like if we find the right place and the right thing that we want to do uh, we will stop and stay for a month or two however long we need and make money that way um from doing that i actually got a job working for a tiny house building company so i do um, like administrative work and design work through that um so that's how we've sustained ourselves this far but liam has a little bit of a different story so you go ahead yeah, so back in 2016, my uh, my uncle passed away from a super rare disease and it was kind of completely out of nowhere. And he didn't have any uh, children or a partner. And so the money was left to, the, the money that he had at least was left to all of his nephews. Um, so the money that I got from my uncle, I was fortunate enough to put on a down payment on a house before going to university. Um, this is back when housing prices were like affordable and I was able to put I think it was like a $45,000 um, down payment on a house and then while I was in university 
Um, big reason why I did that was to do that instead of paying rent. And so people paid rent to me and it was my buddies. So I was able to give them a deal, but also pay off my mortgage. Um, and then like I was one of the, the few people who was like the, kind of on the positive end of this housing crisis that's happening in Canada. And so at the end of my four years of school, the price had gone up like just an amount that I c couldn't be luckier to, um, to have like taken advantage of. And so I sold my house. And I sold my house, what, a year and a half ago? Something, almost two years now. It's almost yeah. been two years since I've sold my house. And so using the money, the profit from that, I was able to buy our truck, um, buy the trailer that we're currently trying to sell and the camper that we currently live in. So. The camper we bought together. Yeah, the, sorry, sorry, <laughs> the, camper, the camper we bought together. So we split this thing right down the middle 50-50. And uh, as we stop, it's not like I don't work at all. Like. I just spent two months with Taylor up in Northern BC. Um, I'm a carpenter by trade, but I went to school for philosophy. Um, but the money I make is typically from carpentry. Um, so I was able to do that for two months. But yeah, so like the reason why I'm able to do all this um, like work in here and renovation stuff is from a stint that I did with a custom building company back in Ontario. Um, so I was a carpenter there. And then I flipped my house when I was in school. I did all the renovations myself. Um, and then I've just kind of picked up odd jobs for cash here and there um, but recently I've transitioned into trying to make money full-time on my art um, so that'll be a whole trip in and of itself but that is my personal main goal is to be able to sustain myself financially with art if you're seriously considering living in a van or like making this plunge and living this sort of lifestyle live in a car for a week like, and see how you like that yeah because the the van life that you see online um, isn't what it's like in person like this is it's it's glamorous in a way because we're able to travel and everybody we talk to about it they say oh what a life oh what a life but they don't see the ins and outs of like an everyday for us like we wake up stuff has to move you know like we get up and it, everything becomes a little bit more challenging <laughs> you gotta find a place to poop like 20 percent of van life is finding a place to poop <laughs> like, yeah yeah um so that's like my main like practical piece of advice but to add to that like what I would, what advice I would give to anyone who wants to start van life is um, go for it. Like it's a very scary thing to do because there's not necessarily like a clear path forward. But I say I recommend it highly to anyone who would be interested in doing it. And I think that um, over time, like you will learn the skills you need to do it for a long time. And uh, the only way to learn is by doing and by making mistakes. So I just recommend it like highly to anyone who has any interest in this life whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. And if you like, you take us for instance, like um, sure, I'm like, I'm handy with my background, but with in terms of camping and like sustaining yourself, we're, we were before June, last June, we were completely like yeah, we beginners. never camped. We never, never camped. I've I went never camping. been camping prior to living. Yeah, I went camping like twice this. when I was ten or something, or maybe three or four times, and then we started camping full time essentially. Yeah. And so, like getting into this, I had no idea how like propane systems worked. Um, I barely knew what a twelve volt battery system was like. Solar energy, I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, what have I learned from myself from living this lifestyle? A lot, for sure. Uh, so when I started traveling like this, I had just finished university. I took political science in university and I don't want anything to do with a career in political science. So I was really lost, like trying to figure out what I would love to do with my life. And uh, I think it's just given me a lot of time to reflect on so many things that I've done or thought about doing. Um, and it's really given me a lot of clarity as to what I want to do now. So when we started traveling, I saw so depression and anxiety, or I suffer from depression and anxiety, I should, I should say, instead. And uh, I was like just a mess. I was really depressed and I found it hard to enjoy this life. And from, you know, just lots of time being able to sit with myself and being in the face of a lot of challenges, uh, kind of at all times, and just having a lot of time to just reflect, honestly, I've just learned that like, I can overcome those things, life can get better, and uh, yeah, to anyone struggling with that, having time to think and having time away from, you know, like social media and uh, that kind of stuff, it really, really does help, so I've learned a lot. And uh, what have I learned about myself? Um, lots as well, definitely. I think that this lifestyle has humbled me a lot, um, like I've definitely, I definitely went into this thinking that it was going to be a piece of cake. and it for sure was not. Um, I learned to 
just learn. I just learned like tons of different stuff about living on the road um, in terms of sustaining myself, um, growing food. Like last year when we were living in the trailer, um, I had no idea how composting or anything worked and I'd like take food scraps and like wouldn't want to put it in the compost. So I'd just like shovel it into the plant when Taylor wasn't <laughs> watching. I was like, oh, they'd appreciate some, no. <laughs> some, some leftover salad, but it was killing plants. So just like little random stuff that you wouldn't really like think of. Um, while living in a house and having you know like depending on a city for your life i've learned that the like the motivation for what you're doing is extremely important um so it's not just like what you're doing and how you're doing it but the goals behind something are extremely important um so for instance taylor and i when we first started this like a big goal of ours was to sustain ourselves with travel content and so we were putting out some really cool stuff last summer, but I remember just like sitting there and like refreshing my phone, like, oh, who liked it? Who commented? Who mm -hmm. And like, personally, I've talked like so much negative stuff about social media. And then I fell like head first into the trap that I told people to avoid. Um, so I've learned that like when you do something, it needs to come from your heart because otherwise you're going to end up feeling empty. My personal philosophy on life would be that it's not that serious. And <laughs> I say that only because it isn't like a lot of things matter so much in the moment, but man, like just to be present, present and take in what's really happening around you and like put into perspective what really matters like that to me is it's not that serious. It's just life. It, nothing matters. So you can do anything you want to do. Um, but I'm also like a big proponent of hard work and in order to bring your dreams to reality, like it can suck sometimes. Um, so it's, it's really paired from like, I think an upbringing of playing hockey and just like having parents who really like push me to push myself. Um, but pair that with what Taylor said that everything's not that serious, you know? So on Instagram, our tag is no.postal. Um, and the philosophy behind that is we live life without a postal code. Um, pretty self-explanatory um you can also find me on instagram at my name um, and that's where all of my art is if you're interested in checking out any of my art i do a mix of digital and recently i've been pouring myself more into illustrations and um just stuff more that i can touch with my hands i guess and my tag is liam winslow um it'll be in the the show notes i'm sure and pretty soon probably by the time that you hear this and listen to this we will have our podcast up and running the no postal podcast um, It'll probably be on Spotify. Yeah, which we'll be, we'll be talking about. Tell them what we'll be talking about. Yeah, so we kind of wanted to do it based on like the reality of van life, traveling tips. Um, but also deeper stuff. Deeper too. stuff, like I don't know, psychedelic stuff like that. Yeah, we, uh, we both like we're both extremely interested in psychedelics and everything that's been happening and has been happening and the sort like boiling in the background for the last sixty years is all coming to the the forefront we're really excited about that yeah and also just mental health yeah um, mental health stuff like that because it's just everyone's struggles so yeah. why not talk about it and relationship just everything we'd like to talk about we thought i don't know we just want to really dive deep into what we're doing and what we care about so and no postal yeah. podcast and and, then... on, and we'll have a youtube channel up and running too by the time this comes out but all this can be found to make it simply just look at our instagram and we'll we'll point you away from there yeah, yeah. thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video please share it with a friend also, if you want to watch more Alternative Dwellings, we've got a playlist popping up right here, and we release new episodes every single Sunday, so consider subscribing.